I want to welcome you to the Ask Jeff YouTube channel. And I kind of got some bad news slash good news. We actually do not have a question of the day today. Due to some technical issues or travel concerns, we're not actually going to address a specific question today, but here's what we are going to do. We're going to show you a clip from Wednesday night's regular Ask Jeff sessions. And we would encourage you to be a part of our Wednesday night. See, on the daily YouTube channel, we address questions maybe 90 seconds, two or three minutes, but on Wednesday night, we're able to dig into your questions, go 10, 15, 20 minutes, follow up questions. We're able to dialogue with each other. So let me encourage you, Wednesday night, 6.30 Central Standard Time, tune into Ask Jeff, the weekly edition. Wherever you are, you can be a part of it live. You can submit your question and be a part of the discussion. If you're not able to join us live, we always archive the material. Every Wednesday night, 6.30, Ask Jeff Weekly. Today's YouTube question is actually going to take you to Wednesday night and you're going to see what you can be a part of every single week. It says, I recently started reading the Bible. I'm up to Samuel chapter 1. I just wonder why there's been so much violence in the Bible up to this point. Wars, brutal killings, rape, etc. You're absolutely correct. The Bible is a violent book because what we see are the unfortunate natural ramifications and consequences of man's sinful, depraved nature. In fact, sin enters humanity in chapter 3 of Genesis, okay? Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, walking with the Lord. Everything seems great, okay? It is paradise, literally, on the earth. However, we fall into sin. We listen to the, the enemy speaking unto us, and, and we decide that it's better to do what we want to do than what God has told us to do. We fall into sin, right? The very next chapter, we get one chapter down the road, and Cain murders his brother. Now, today, in our world, when we think of sin, infractions, breaking the law, whether we realize or not, we really do grade sin, do we not? We say, oh, there, there's murder, and then there's cheating, and then there's law. I mean, we, we have these stair step, even though we know the Bible says all sin is sin. We get it. But in our mind, we have these gradations, Correct. Do you find it interesting that most of us, and by the way, most cultures, no matter what they're founded on from a spiritual, biblical perspective or not, most cultures in the history of the world classify murder as the big one. And yet one chapter in the Bible, we're already committing murder. That shows you the gravity of sin. And from that point on, it just continues. In fact, by the time you get to Genesis chapter 6, we're three chapters past the Garden of Eden, and the Bible says that every thought of mankind was completely wicked, doing that which was unseemly. It doesn't take long. So by the time we get to 1 Samuel, I mean, exactly as the question uh, supposes, we've got wars, we've got internal fighting, external fighting, brutal killings, rape. We've got all kinds of crazy things that have been happening. That is what happens when sin infects humanity. The, that's what comes out. In fact, Galatians chapter 5, verse 21 22, right before the famous fruit of the Spirit, it says these are the works of the flesh. You know what the works of the flesh are listed? Exactly what's on this screen. It talks about everything uh, from murders and from rapes and from fornication, all kinds of things that are listed because that's what the flesh does. And that is why we have the desperate need to be saved because apart from salvation, apart from the Holy Spirit, that's what our lives look like. Now, on this question, I want to share with you a story, it's a personal story that I think really will not only help us see the question, but understand how to utilize this to our biblical advantage. Most of you know uh, that years ago I went to college, I went to a historically Baptist college, okay? I went to a place where in my day, and they may have changed it by now, and of course I know they alter curriculum through the years, but when I was there, there were two classes that you had to take if you wanted a degree from the institution, Okay, one of those classes is because somebody gave a whole lot of money and it was political science 2302. Okay, everybody had to take it, right? The second class is you had to take New and Old Testament. You didn't have a choice. If you wanted to graduate from that institution, you had to take those courses, all right? It didn't matter what your major was, didn't matter what your belief system was, you could be a full fledged atheist and you were taking New and Old Testament at that college. It's just part of the deal. Well, the dormitory that I lived in across the, the uh, I guess the, the hallway from me was an individual who actually came uh, from the great city of El Paso, Texas, all the way to Waco uh, to go to college. He did not grow up in church. 
He was not a Christian. His family weren't Christians. He was only there because of the business school. They had a great business school, and he had a business mind. He wanted a great education, but he had to endure these courses. Our very first semester as freshmen, he was taking Old Testament. He just wanted to get it out of the way. Been about five or six weeks. He came and he knocked on my door. He knew me. He knew what I believed. He knew why I was there. He said, do you have a Bible I could borrow? I said, uh, sure, why? And he said, well, I'm taking Old Testament, and, and tomorrow I've got a, or this next week I've got a test, and I've got to sign off that I've read a certain part of it. I said, okay, that's fine. What do you have to read? He said, I have to read Genesis through Joshua by next week. I said, brother, you in for it. He said, what do you mean? He had never read the Bible. I said, man, you got a whole lot of reading to do. So I went and grabbed the Bible off my shelf. Thankfully, I had multiple copies, and I gave it to him. About a week later, he came back. He said, here's your Bible. I said, why are you giving it back? He goes, well, I've read what I need to read. I said, well, don't you have a test on the next section later? He goes, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And he took the Bible back. And I said, well, and he goes, can I talk to you about the Bible? Now, I'm thinking open door, right? I said, yeah, sure. He goes, this is the greatest book I've ever read in my life. And I'm thinking gospel opportunity. And I said, what do you mean it's the greatest book? He goes, man, he said they're killing each other. They're lying to each other. They're cheating on each other. He said, this is better than watching HBO. I went, oh, my. Can I fast forward? Years later, not only did that young man become a believer, he and his wife became student pastors of a local church. This question when you read about these horrific things, sometimes we're like, why is that there? Because it shows us our depraved condition. It shows us our sinful nature. And honestly, if we read it as this young man did, it shows us why we need Jesus. Because in your Bible and in life, we've tried everything we can to fix everything. And we never can fix it. Ever. Humanity has tried corporately. We've tried individually. The only one who could fix it was Jesus Christ. So yes, it is a very violent book, very much a pillage book because it shows the gravity and the depravity of our sinful nature. Thanks for being a part of today's Daily Question. Now we answer a question each and every day. Please feel free to submit a new question at askjeff.net. We may not have gotten to yours today, but we eventually will continue to be a part of this. Subscribe so you don't miss out on a question every day.